kind of late. You know, I've been up for a couple hours. <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I slept in a little bit today to like 7.30, but yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Shy Together. I am your host and founder, Pratipa Day. You are tuning in for your cup of courage, hope, and imagination today. So on this platform, we use courage to showcase the stories. We use hope to overcome and imagination to understand and resonate with the stories that are being shared. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome my good friend, Mr. Craig Chavez, Jr. <laughs> hey, Pratipa, we've been having this talk to uh, collaborate for a minute, but I'm so glad we're able to finally make this happen today. I'm excited for this. Let me see the shirt. So Creative <laughs> Craig, this is the last time you'll see this type of shirt because I actually just created a new crown look. But uh, wow. yeah, I got to be branded. Stay on brand. Even the, uh, yeah, the necklace is, 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 on, is on point. Yeah. So can so, people buy those necklaces? Branded. Soon. I'm taking a note from your playbook and going to be uh, you know, selling some more merch coming up. Short. What do you mean you're taking a note from my playbook? Because I'm saying so? No, I mean, like, I, I got your mug. I mean, that's I merch number one right there. I, I would so, wear that uh, Unfortunately, necklace. Yeah, unfortunately, it got cracked. So I'll be looking for the new mug coming soon. So uh, excited for that. Wow. I really like your background. So this degree on the left here of me, is that for your master's? Or what is that for? No, that's actually the my award. Um, mm -hmm. My book, Burns of a Dream, won the best entrepreneurship book uh, in 2020 yeah. at the American Book Festival, which is like one of the top five uh, most prestigious book awards uh, in the U.S. for independent mm -hmm. authors. So, yeah, that's what that is. How does it that's make you feel? <laughs> How does it make you feel? Oh, it felt great. I mean, like when I was writing the book, like I wasn't looking for validation or affirmation from mm. other people because this was such a personal story that it was really therapeutic for for my my healing and my growth. But I can't lie, like it felt great to be recognized by such a prestigious institution. So uh, it felt good. Not gonna lie. Oh my god. So let me tell the viewers a bit about you before we continue on. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> yes. So Craig M. Chavez Jr. is an award-winning author and business strategist on a mission to help entrepreneurs develop proactive, profitable, and proven business models. At the core of Craig's coaching philosophy lies the mantra, become the entrepreneur of your life. Through the lens, he coaches through an alternative and holistic perspective cultivated from over a decade of his firsthand experience launching and managing multiple businesses in Ghana, Costa Rica, Peru, and the United States of America. He is a serial entrepreneur, a returned Peace Corps volunteer, a former Division I collegiate <laughs> athlete, and received his BSBA from Samford with an M, University and MBA from the University of Tampa. Craig is also a super foodie, shout out to tacos, world traveler, lifelong learner, <laughs> <laughs> and currently in Columbus, Ohio is where he resides. So morning, Miss Robin, you're hot as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Miss Robin is the best. Everyone check out Miss Robin and her juice drinks because they are fresh and she is hot. So sounds good. <laughs> Not to take the light away from Craig. <laughs> yeah, cold best juices. Miss Robin is awesome. So in her fitness field. Yeah. So Craig, where would you like to start discussing your journey? <laughs> I mean, it's it's been one hell of a journey. I mean, I could kind of give you like a three to five minute rundown of like where I began and like how I got to this point now, if you don't okay. mind that. Yeah. Yeah. So for your audience who most people don't know me, but my name's Craig. Um, I'm originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. But um, growing up, I, I moved around a lot because of my father's job. And like I used to hate having to go to a new school, a new community, a new environment, and always having to adjust and like make me make new friends. And, but early on that, that kind of taught me, it's like, okay, like if you want to uh, create a new opportunity for yourself, you might have to change your environment. And one of the things that really kept me grounded through all this change was athletics. Um, I was good enough to get a division one football scholarship that took me out of Ohio down to Birmingham, Alabama. And I just had hopes and dreams of being a professional athlete. Um, I had the ability, I might've had a shot at the next level, but unfortunately uh, my sophomore year of playing football, I suffered a career ending injury. 
And so my whole identity was wrapped up in sports. And when that came down, like I didn't know what to do with myself. And I wanted to take a shortcut and I tried quitting and wanted to drop out of school. But um, fortunately, my Spanish professor intervened in my life and mm -hmm. convinced me to study abroad in Costa Rica, which my whole perspective in my life to this concept of business. And so I came back to school refreshed, switched my major to entrepreneurship, started a couple side hustles on campus, including um, serving <laughs> as a DJ in Birmingham, Alabama, which was really interesting. And um, I used the pro proceeds from those businesses to go, to go to Spain. And that really locked in my love for international business and travel. So after I finished up my undergraduate studies, I realized Alabama wasn't the place for me. So I went down to Tampa and got my MBA in less than a year, which is pretty mm. crazy because it's a two year program. But um, as I was wrapping up my degree, I was interviewing for jobs in New York City and San Francisco but I just didn't see myself sitting in a cubicle for the rest of my life. And I didn't get any job offers. But what did happen was another, I think, divine intervention. And uh, I met a Peace Corps recruiter at a Chipotle <laughs> in New York before I flew back to Tampa to, to graduate. And she's, she's like, hey, you have the perfect background for the Peace Corps. You should apply. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Peace Corps, it's basically a 27-month opportunity to live and work uh, in another country you know, sponsored mm. by the U.S. government. And so I applied for that opportunity and I got the chance to go to Peru to do basically economic development consulting. And the moment I landed in Peru, I was like, you know, I have a dream that I'm going to start a business in this country. I just don't know how that's going to happen. But um, as I was teaching entrepreneurship at colleges, uh, one of my professors who I taught with was a distiller. And after class, he would teach me how to distill Pisco, which is like the, a national uh, beverage of, of Peru. And so I took the liqueurs that we were making and I sold them to some of the business owners and farmers <laughs> that I was coaching and consulting with, which probably wasn't legal with the Peace Corps, but you know, and that was my entrepreneurial mind at work. And uh, after I finished up my Peace Corps service, I immigrated back to Peru and launched the country's first branded craft distillery. Oh my and God. Um, that whole journey of that process was really what my book, Burdens of a Dream, is all about. But um, since that venture in 2017, uh, I've gotten into blockchain. Uh, I've, I've managed a travel startup in Costa Rica. But what I do now today, uh, as you introduced me so kindly, is that um, I'm a business strategist and I really help new entrepreneurs to not only launch their business, but to develop uh, proactive, profitable, and proven business models. And that's just a little bit about me and how I got to this point today. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. There's a, lot, there's a lot of stuff I skipped over, but, you know, Thanks time is gold and money is silver. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing I want to say about Craig, for those who are listening, is that uh, he's really, he's different. Do you want to go into a little bit how you're different, Craig, than other people? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think, like, we're, we're all different and we should mm. be different. Because, like, mm -hmm. we're really all products of our environment. And like your life is just an amalgamation of your different experiences along the way. But for me, like particularly in my field of being a business strategist and a business coach, like my perspective is really grounded on my philosophy of helping people to become the entrepreneurs of their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's really a philosophy that most that goes over a lot of people's heads because in entrepreneurship, people think that an entrepreneur all they do is create businesses and make money. Well, when I was writing my book, Burdens of a Dream, I defined an entrepreneur as anyone who takes a calculated risk to create something out of nothing and share it with the world. And so that thing that you create, it can be a business, but it should really be about creating a life that you don't want to, that you don't have to run away from. Because mm -hmm. what people don't realize is that life is a business and you are the product of that business. And when, when you look at life through this lens, you start to move different, you start to think different, and you start to operate different. But furthermore, I also lead with more of a value first, profit second approach. 
And this was really cultivated um, working in the Peace Corps because like, I was working with farmers that couldn't even afford to buy the fruit that they were producing. Mm. And I'm like, something's really wrong with this system uh, that we're operating under. And it's like, you know, money is a byproduct of the value that you create for others. And if I solve your problem or if I make your life better, then you'll compensate me for that. So the, the things that really distinguish me and what make me different are my philosophy, but then also my approach to business. Money is second to me, but creating value is the most important. Wow. I believe I'm taking it away. Also, maybe other people are too. <laughs> But I can vouch for that because I remember the first time I spoke with you, uh, I aligned with you and you gave me value first. I remember the questions I was asking during that time. I was frustrated because I wasn't getting the results. And you gave me, you know, practical wisdom from your own experiences overseas and all. And that day, because of you, I don't know if you know this, but remember that day I started, I did my LLC that same day after I got off the phone with you. But that was because of you. You know, you're being practical. You were like, well, do you have your LLC yet? Like, you know, what do you want to do? And that was like that trigger, like, you know, trigger for me to go and take action and do something. So that was the value you provided. And then mm -hmm. I remember I had your book in my saves and you were like, what is it doing there? And then I bought it, but I haven't finished reading it all, but I don't regret it because so now I want to share one of the quotes because I picked out three things and maybe you can uh, elaborate on those if that's okay with you. <laughs> oh, no doubt. No, I, I'm on your show. So uh, you, you lead. <laughs> lead. <Hell yeah. laughs> this is your platform. Right. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Robin. She also agrees that money is second. So yes, this I quote <laughs> by, please let me know if this is pronounced right, Paolo Coelho. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Where did you discover him? Well, one of my favorite books of all time is The Alchemist. And it, mm -hmm. it really reminded me because it's a story of, of becoming, of a mm -hmm. journey. So I kind of mm -hmm. framed my book, Burdens of a Dream, in a similar format where I talk about my journey. But yeah, he's mm -hmm. a fantastic author. The Alchemist, a very popular yeah. book. Because I want to say you wrote your book really well, like each quote and then your own chapter really aligns with the quote and it has your style in it for those who don't know. Mm -hmm. So the quote says, you must be the person you have never had the courage to be. Gradually, you will discover that you are that person. But until you can see this clearly, you must pretend and invent. So I want to ask you, is this the fake it till you make it? What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Make it to you make it is 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 a dangerous mentality, Ooh. but at the same time, like it presents a conundrum because, like, for example, for somebody to buy from you, like you have to first believe in yourself before other people believe in you. So I think that's really where I was coming from. It's like, okay, it's it's self-confidence. It's not faking it. Like I, I'm not about, you know, putting forth an image that's false. But what I am really saying is that, hey, Pratibla or anybody else watching, like believe mm. in yourself first mm. and then other people will, will believe in you. So it's a really okay. about self-confidence and self-motivation because a lot, so many people don't believe in themselves. And that's what cripples them and prevents them from moving forward. You mm. got to believe in yourself. And that's what that quote really means. So for you, how long did it take for you to believe in yourself? Do you feel like there's a pivoting moment where you did like, yes, now I do? <laughs> It was when I wrote the book. I mean, like, I'll, I'll be yeah. transparent about that. Like, the book is what, like, saved me and got me back on track. Because, like I said, I left out a lot in my journey. But in 2019, I, uh, I had liquidated my, my company, Visa Jump, in Washington, D.C. Um, I didn't know what to do next. I found out that my uh, grandmother passed away. And I, and I was going through kind of, like, my own transition. And so I wound up moving back to Ohio for the first time in 10 years. And like, I was like, what am I going to do here? And so I started going out, networking, applying for jobs and nobody would hire me. And like, you know, there's, a, there's reasons for that. I won't get into to be non-political, but num the number one reason was probably my entrepreneurial background. And everybody asked me the same question. They're like, Craig, are you going to stay here or are you going to leave? And I try. I lied to them. I was like, you know, I'm gonna stay here. I want this cushy, comfortable job, and nothing ever happened. But <laughs> in the midst of all that turmoil, I went out and I was was sharing my story, and I ran into a um, a publisher, and he's like, Craig, you have a book in you. You need to share your story. And wow. initially, I rejected that. 
But when I signed the book deal and I started writing the book, the project transformed into a calling. And so writing that book was like, okay, me re-believing in myself, realizing that like, I am this entrepreneur and I can't run away from who I really am. And so that's what really gave me the confidence to move forward was just writing the book. Wow. I just want to say that no one gives me a job either. Like I've applied during my <laughs> journey and I'm like to schools, you know, back to the things I used to do. I get no calls back. And I'm like, that's for a reason. No one wants to hire me like <laughs> mm -hmm. because my resume. So, yeah, I can understand that. So when did you start writing this book? How long did it take for you to write Burdens of a Dream? It's amazing. It took me only three months, three months. Like, that's why I say like like this wasn't just a, a a project like it was it was therapeutic like the first words i wrote were the dedication and these are the words i wrote i said this book is dedicated to all those who will dare to abandon the status quo follow the road not taken and discover the person they're truly meant to become let me and check so it as much as i was <laughs> yeah you, you can look at it verbatim yes it is here yeah, Craig, but as much as me. I was writing those, <laughs> as much as I was writing those words to you and other people, I was really writing those words to myself. And so yeah. every day I got up at 5 a.m. and from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m., I wrote out the book. And in three months, it went from just an idea into that, the thing that you're holding right there. Talk about dedication. So I recently, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean when you say that word, I think of Nipsey Hustle because like that was one of that was one of his favorite words, but it's it's just about staying the course. Mm. I mean, like uh, aside from a lack of confidence, like a lack of commitment is probably problem number 2 that most people or most entrepreneurs run into. It's like they give up too easy. And um there's a, there's like a quote I'm butchering, but there was this comedian who basically said like why would you boo yourself off your own stage? Mm. And he's like, you know, when people get step up on the stage or when like they start their journey, they take themselves out the game. It's like, don't do that. Stay focused, realize you're not going to get results overnight and just stay the course because what people don't realize is that your next best step will be revealed as long as you persevere. Like people think all the answers, all the results are going to come instantaneously. And that's just not true. You have to stay the course and keep persevering and stay dedicated. And that's when the magic really happens. Wow. Let's see what Bhavani said. You guys will give jobs to others. You're much more than just a job. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. You are changing many lives, including people in high level jobs for 20 years without confidence, clarity, and struggling without peace and happiness. Wow, Bhavani, that's so powerful. Yeah. yeah. I recently do have a friend who's in corporate and she's finally going to leave and she it's affected her mental health. So when I ask mm -hmm. you, like, what was the lowest point for you, like throughout this entrepreneur journey? Did you have any lows or like struggle at all with your mental health? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I go back to like the Peace Corps journey is like you had these things called euphoric highs and then mm -hmm. like these kind of like depressing lows. But like that's kind of symbolic with life. Like you don't have a mountain without a valley. Like mm. medically, like when you hook somebody up to an EKG machine, it measures their heartbeat, right? And mm -hmm. it goes up and down, up and down. But when it flatlines, they're gone. And mm. so that's kind of like symbolic of life. Like if your life is just flatline, if there's no ups and no downs, you're not really living. And wow. so going back to my philosophy about becoming the entrepreneur of your life, I mean, I've had some crazy highs, but then like some really low lows. And like that, uh, that biggest low, um, I kind of mentioned it earlier, was like my transition from actually DC back to Ohio. But before I got back to Ohio, I made a pit stop in, in Pittsburgh where I did take a corporate job at a, at a company I won't mention. And I only lasted a uh, and um, a story that I haven't told many people is that, like, I could have been George Floyd before George Floyd happened. Like, two cops showed up at my apartment with guns um, because they got I got called in uh, by an employee who was jealous of what I was doing. 
And I, I, I almost lost my life based upon like a false accusation while working at a company. And that to me, like that was my signal. Like I have to change. I have to get out of here. Like I'm going down a path that's not for me. Um, I wasn't, I didn't have really good habits. All I did after work was just drink. And that wasn't a very healthy way to proceed forward. And so like moving back to my home state and being around family was the thing that really healed me and got me back on track. Because if things would have just changed in a different way, I wouldn't be here. So uh, yeah, that was probably my, my lowest low, but it's led to a really high, high what I'm doing right now. That just hit me out of nowhere. <laughs> you never told me that before. <laughs> and we talked I haven't all told a lot of people about that. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't told a lot you of know, people about that. It's interesting. I was reading or listening or I came across something where I discovered that more people's homes were, you know, broken into and, you know, minorities, right? And I recently saw that and I was just like, what is this? Like, you know, and like exactly what you're talking about. And it's like, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's another rabbit hole. But I just wanted to be, like I said, when we were talking yeah. about this conversation, I was like, yeah, everything's going to be on the table. I'm not going to hold anything back. I mean, obviously, I had to glaze mm -hmm. over some stuff. But yeah, that's a story most people don't know. So do you feel like you'd live in Peru or another country of your choice permanently because of those reasons, those kinds of reasons of the police brutality, do you feel? So for me, like one of the reasons why I really desired to move back abroad yeah. was just because of the, the, the freedom that I felt. I mean, like there's nothing against yeah. our, our home countries. I mean, every there's no perfect place in the world. Now. Every place has its pros. Every place has its cons. Mm -hmm. But when I was out on the road, like I, I felt like I was living instead yeah. of like being here. Well, no people, you know, they. F I feel like people are living to work, whereas like in other environments, people are working to live. Yeah, and I just enjoy traveling. I, I'm a nomad by nature. That's how I started off this uh, conversation, yeah. talking about my upbringing and the constant moving and the constant change. I just love to explore. And uh, I'm happiest on the road. So uh, that's something I'm definitely going to uh, continue uh, starting next year. Yeah. And I want to ask you, do you feel like those people who aligned with you at those times in your life, you know, for the Peace Corps, then you saw the lady again, and then um, regarding what was it, distillery, remind me, do you feel mm -hmm. like those people yeah. were like angels in your life? Or how would your life have been, do you feel, if it wasn't for those people? Yeah, I know. I think, you know, my mother put it best. She's like, you know, people mm. are in your life for a reason. And some people are in there for a long term season, and <laughs> other people are there for like a short term season. Yeah. And people come in your life and out the next day and I never correct. come back. <laughs> yeah. And there's people that kind of like weave, and you'll go five years without talking, and then you'll come back, and it's like yeah. your best friends. Yes. But for me, I, I think every opportunity, every moment is an opportunity to learn. And I definitely do think, I, I loved your kind of like verbiage, but there are some people who are angels in disguise. Like, for example, my professor, like mm -hmm. without her convincing me to study abroad in Costa Rica, who knows where my life would have been? Um, you know, if I think back to some of my business mentors who kind of, who invested in my distillery uh, at the last second to help me reach my funding goals. Like if mm. they didn't give me that money, there's no way I could have gone through that experience to write the book that you read. So mm. definitely there's people who are angels and then there's people who are probably not the angels Devil. that are in your life. Yeah, but so, every person is and has an, presents an opportunity for you to learn from that situation or that encounter. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a part in your book about the loan when there was a struggle with the loan, um, and you were waiting. And I believe it's "Go with the flow." Um, yeah. After 24, go with the flow. And the quote for that is, and the most successful people are those who accept and adapt to constant change. This adaptability requires a degree of flexibility and humility most people can't manage. I feel like this is something you'd say, but it's by Paul Luttis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something you'd say, that's why it's in your book. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's it's so important, so important. I mean, just today, like before mm -hmm. our uh, conversation, like I was working on my new product launch, and wow. you know, the, the the typical person in my field is gonna say, "Hey, you know, all you have to do is put up ads, create a funnel, and then you're gonna make all this wonderful passive income, and mm -hmm. everything's, and you could work on a laptop, and everything's, you know, all hunky dory." Couldn't be further from the truth. Like I'm having yeah. to adjust and pivot and create all these systems and all these processes. And it's taking so much longer than I envisioned. But that's why going with the flow is so, so important because nothing is what, nothing, um, how can I say this? Like everything is different when you actually go through it. And we always have this projection of a reality but when we go and experience that reality and it's different than the projection, that's when we encounter friction and resistance. And so I encountered so much friction and resistance because I thought it was going to be a lot easier to do this thing. But because I'm adaptable, I'm flexible, I'm nimble, and I can go with the flow, I'm just, it's another day, another dollar. But that's what this whole journey is about, is about falling in love with the process and mm. not the destination. Because when you're consumed with the destination, it's gonna take you off course and you won't be able to go with the flow. But when mm. you're just focused, you'll just be more relaxed. And that's when you no know, more magic happens. In this moment, I want you to share with the viewers where they can get in touch with you and that how they can book a consultation with you. Yeah, well, I have my name spelled on the uh, stream yard. So you can just yeah. go to creativecraig.com. You spell that C-R-E, the number eight, I-V-E, Craig.com. And yeah, you could book a 30-minute uh, consultation and we could just have a really awesome and amazing conversation. And I'll drop the uh, information in the chat as well. Yeah. And we're not done yet. <laughs> I no, just wanted you to tell not. them <laughs> while they're on here. Yeah. And I'll put my Calendly link in there as well. Smart. <laughs> yes. That's a smart Systems business. and processes. <laughs> yeah. I've messed up before, you know, it's like as you move within your entrepreneurial journey, you become more effective and efficient. And uh, that's yeah. what I try to do. And that's what I try to uh, teach as well. Wow. Ms. Robin said, fall in love with the process. So I want to go back to chapter 13, Carpe Diem, where we're talking about Paulo Coelho. Mm. And yeah. I believe this is the last of your sentence. May I read it? Yes. Okay. Remember, discomfort is only temporary and the rewards of perseverance are worth their weight in gold. What? That is heavy. Yeah. I know you said that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, don't settle. Stay the course. Like too many people wow. are settling in their lives. And that, that's where the problem happens. Is like That's why I entitled the book Burdens of a Dream. Like everybody has a dream, whether it's being an entrepreneur, whether it's being a successful lawyer, a veterinarian, whatever. But so many people, instead of like working and paying the cost to get to their dream, they settle. And then all this time goes by and all this tension builds up. And then all these people wind up having these midlife crises, you know, wondering where all this time went and frustrated at the world, but they're really frustrated with themselves that they didn't stay true to what their original goal or dream was. And like, if you just persevere and you stay dedicated and you don't give up and you put in the work to get to whatever your goal is, like the, the, the rewards that you reap are going to be worth more than gold. They're going to be priceless. So that's why you have to uh, stay the course and like, don't settle because regret is something that nobody wants to you know live with for the rest of their life. I surely don't. Mm -mm. That leads that is difficult. Yeah. <laughs> that leads into chapter 33. As mm. the book is titled 33 Actionable Nuggets of Wisdom for the Creative Entrepreneur. So 33 New Hope, which is perfect for what you just said. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow is the most important thing in life comes into us at midnight very clean. It's perfect when it arrives and it puts itself in our hands. It hopes we've learned something from yesterday. John Wayne. Wow. Yeah. And honestly, like I wanted to end the book just like mm -hmm. on, a, on a high note because as I said, like there's, there's a lot of tension in, in the journey and the story I told. Like there's highs, there's lows. And even though I lost my dream business, uh, due to uh, you know, a, a fraudulent uh, encounter with my landlord, 
wow. I still had to look back and like realize that this was such an amazing experience. Like I got to live my, my dream was my reality. Like I was not just a dreamer, I was a doer. And that those three years in Peru were I, like, I shit you not, like were 30 years of life experience in three oh years. Like, I accelerated my personal and professional growth so much by going through that experience. And there's another chapter in the book entitled Fail. Mm. And most people think fail, failing is bad, but to fail is just to experience a first attempt in learning. And that's what I did. Like that whole journey was about learning and figuring out what I did right, what I did wrong, why those things occurred, and moving forward to make sure that like I don't commit those mistakes again, but then I double down on the positives so that I can keep growing at the rate that I'm growing. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like when things go wrong, like something has to motivate you to keep going forward. And it's that hope that tomorrow or today will be a better day that really keeps you going when you don't feel like going anymore. So well said, so well spoken. <laughs> I realize you like the word amalgamation a lot. Is that your favorite yeah. word? <laughs> I see it it's, in the it's book. One of them. Yeah, uh, I, I do because it's a, I love really all encompassing words. Mm. Like when people ask, like, what's the number one word that describes an entrepreneur? I typically say resourceful. And why resourceful? Because it's an amalgamation of so many key traits of like mm. strategy of focus, of hard work, of creativity, of innovation, of dedication, of clarity, consistency, commitment. Like all those little words combine to, you know, create the word resourcefulness or mm -hmm. resourceful. So I just love those like power words that really kind of like hit people in the chest because they mean something <laughs> instead of being some like fluff BS word that doesn't that doesn't have any impact or value or something like that. You are special. <laughs> <laughs> and, Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you too. And this wraps up well because this just flowed so perfectly, just like your book, because mm -hmm. in the end you say, define what success means to you, choose to live life on your terms and help make this world a better place for all, which is essentially what you just said. So with this, we come to a close. How nice is that? Yeah. No, it's, it's beautiful, but... <laughs> Just to elaborate that on a little more, yeah, I really like how you ended that. Is like what it, ultimately success is like what you define it to be, mm -hmm. and I think that's something that people don't talk a lot about because other people have definitions that they want mm -hmm. you to live by, and it's like, guess what? Like, this is my life, like, I want to define my life the way I see fit, and as long as I'm not hurting other people as long as I'm making this world a better place, then like what I'm doing is, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so like a part of like my coaching and strategic methodology is helpful to get to their point of freedom. And that point of freedom is like where they're living life on their, terms. whatever those terms, as long as add to others, not hurting you, not hurting other people. I think, I don't think life gets any better than that. But in order to get there, you first have to define what you want your life to be, but more importantly, mm -hmm. what you want your life not to be. Because everybody, you know, at, at, when you ask kids a question, hey, who do you want to be when you're growing up? Mm -hmm. They get a million different, uh, they give you a million different answers. <clears throat> but if you were to ask them, hey, who do you not want to be when you're growing up? They're going to give you different responses. Mm -hmm. But when you're able to eliminate stuff, you're able to focus on the positives instead of the negatives. I just wanted to reiterate uh, that it's very important that you really define your life and what you want your life to become. And that allows you to be more strategic so you can accomplish whatever those goals uh, you want to accomplish are. Wow. You truly care, Craig. You can tell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for people who believed in me. Not that many yeah. people, I could count them on my hand, but uh, they had a major yeah. impact. And so I'm just eternally grateful. And that's why I opened up the book with a debt, with a, with gratitude. Yeah. I thank people before I wrote yeah. the book. So uh, it's really important. I wanna just um, mention briefly about your team who designed the covers because I love this lavender cover, if you can't tell. 
and then Craig's head on the back. <laughs> <laughs> but this is amazing and then you have your workbook as well so you guys can find this on amazon is there anyone out anywhere else yeah so they can go to amazon they could find yeah. the paperback hardback audiobook and uh ebook if they want it or they yeah. can go to my website www.burdensofadream.com yeah. and they can get a direct download there if they want that but it's all amazing. formats are available for everybody I love it. So what's next for you? I know you said you're planning to go abroad as we wrap up. Like, what is your next goal? <laughs> My next goal. So I, I kind of like snuck it in there a little bit, but I have a, a new product coming out yeah. called the Entrepreneur Affirmation Bootcamp. Mm. And so the whole value proposition I do know is that. I'm going to help, help you to transform your idea into a profitable business opportunity mm with confidence. So essentially, I'm going to help people to discover a business idea built around their skills, passions, but most importantly, customer demand. Mm. And so after they discover their best business idea, I'm going to help help you to find your ideal client and then not only test your business idea on your ideal client or customer, but also validate it as a profitable business opportunity that you could pursue full time. And so it's a very important product because when most yes. people are starting out in entrepreneurship, they have no idea where to begin. And so yep. a lot of people chase business ideas, but it's like, you shouldn't chase anything. Like if you don't know where to begin, look within, <laughs> like there's a business idea that you have that you could transform into something that's going to be very, very profitable, but you have to do that with intention. And uh, this is what this uh, product is going to help people to accomplish. So that's going to be coming out next month. <laughs> it's a lot what? of work, but I'm super, super excited to help a lot of people take their next best step toward becoming the entrepreneur of their life. Well, thank about. you. And I want to say that you're very simple and to the point, as in I did submit a survey for Craig regarding the boot camp, and it was basic, like three questions, right? It was mm -hmm. like three questions. And in general, you know, your philosophy of like keeping it simple and like you're very genuine and, you know, not, you know, you're not like in the clouds, like on cloud nine, like you're very <laughs> practical and down to earth. So, you know how you mentioned about the kids and um, so do you feel that what you teach, a kid could understand it? Like if you were to, you know, word it that way, like a child would be able to understand what you do? Of course. I mean, that's mm -hmm. why I wrote the book yeah. at just a, a rudimentary level. Like here's, some, here's another, here's another quote. Since I'm full of quotes today, yeah. one of my mentors <laughs> told me that there's genius in simplicity. She's a designer, like a, like a architectural designer. And mm. she's like, there's genius and simplicity. And I didn't get that. But she's like, if somebody is truly a master of their craft, mm -hmm. they will be able to explain what they do in layman's terms so that other people can understand it. And that's very, very powerful because oftentimes you see a lot of people who pretend to be intelligent or who pretend to be knowledgeable and they're using terminology that's confusing mm. and that they don't even understand, but they want to sound like, you know, they're an Einstein. But in all actuality, like if you can explain what you that so that a sixth grader can understand it, which is the average comprehension level of an American, which is neither wow. good nor bad, I won't say that. <laughs> then you really know what you're saying. And then you also know that that person who's trying to help you, you know that they really are qualified to help you because they can explain in a way that doesn't confuse you. So yes, a kid could wow. go through my course and the book with you. <laughs> wow. Thank you for your time today. I hope you had a great time. <laughs> Oh you no! Like this is this has been super dope. No, I'm right? like I said, we've been talking about this for for months, and we made it happen. So uh, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, and I know this you were bringing me on as a guest, but like I've seen your growth over the past couple of months, and it's been quite extraordinary. So yeah. uh, keep doing you, and, and keep staying the course, and don't give up on whatever dream you have. So I thanks. really appreciate you, and thanks for having me on. Thanks. See you. Thanks, everyone, Bye. for tuning in. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>